All right, we'll call our select board meeting for tonight, February 19th, 2020, <coughs> to order. And we'll start with our consent agenda. Uh, we have warrants to approve, AP2032, AP2032B, AP2032S, AP2033DPW, and PR2017. We have the eight annual Helping Hearts for Hadley Schools 5K Family Walk, and you're here to talk about that? So over here, over here to talk about that, okay. Well, we'll just set that aside. Uh, accounting Services and Town Accountant, agreement with PVPC and designation of Eric Kinscherf as Town Accountant. Then we have the Asparagus Festival, WGBY, June 6, 2020. That's you. Okay, yeah, we'll set that aside. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then we have the state legislature asking for confirmation language for special act of legislation. We have the Beer and Cider Garden, June 12th, 19th, 26th, and July 3rd, 2020. Nicole, I'm assuming you want to say something yeah. on that. And then we have the one day liquor license, top of the campus, May 1st, 2020. Commencement Ball Mullins Arena Floor, all alcohol, one day liquor license, top of the campus, men's hockey game playoff, Mullins Center concourse concessions, March 13th, 14th, 15th, wine and malt only, and then a one day liquor license, top of the campus, men's hockey game playoff, <coughs> Mullins Center Commonwealth <coughs> Club, March 13th, 14th, 15th, all alcohol. So motion to approve. But it looks like since we have company, we should pull out the Helping Hearts for Hadley Schools, Asparagus Festival, and also the Beer and Cider Garden. Yep. Yeah. Anything else anybody here for? Just to be sure. Yep. I just have an issue with Esalon Cafe that I want to bring attention to. Oh, okay. We'll wait on that yeah. until public comment. Public okay. Comment. Uh, okay. So, so put those aside. Second. Uh, any discussion about those we've mentioned? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we can do the Helping Hearts first. Great. You guys want to go? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Stacy Reed, and this is one of my board members, Kelly Higgins. Um, and we're here to look for support again from our select board in the town. Um, we are on our eighth uh, 5K race and two-mile walk <coughs> for the Hadley School System. Uh, to date, we've raised $175,000. So still going strong. Uh, of that 175, we've given back an approximate 140, 130, 130,000 dollars in technology, art supplies, PE supplies, um, special ed supplies. We recently purchased um, a desktop computers. Desktop computers for the entire elementary school library. Um, we've done. Ice machines for Hopkins. We've we've done the gamut of <laughs> of uh, items. So we're looking for support again. Our race this year is April fifth on Sunday. Same race route. Same everything. Um, so you've done is. your normal coordination with the police department. Yep, I have upcoming. Yep, we have upcoming yep. meetings with them and all of that good stuff. Great. Um, so, so. To approve and um, just to thank you for all that you do. It's appreciated certainly throughout the community. I, oh, can I? I forgot to ask about hanging the sign on Route 9. Oh, in front of the Russell School? Yeah. Okay, great. All the signs. That's, that's official right there. That's official. <laughs> Thumbs up. Perfect. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Yes. Uh, I probably will. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we have the asparagus festival. <laughs> you walk. There's a nice walking course. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity to come say hello. We're planning for the eighth annual uh, asparagus festival, the seventh to be held on the town common. Our date this year is June 6th, and um, we've been spending the last several months planning and um, um, adjusting the festival a little bit to build out our capacity to manage it a little bit better. 
Um, so we're pretty confident that we can um, meet the expectations and help carry more of the burden of managing traffic and parking. Is there any uh, progress? One of the many concerns that were brought to us last year was that uh, local farmers from Hadley that wanted to participate found it cost prohibitive to even be I, I don't know how that mis 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 misinformation got out. The pricing structure for vendors is uh, farmers are, are $75 to come be part of the festival. Okay. We've kept it at the same rate. Everyone else is paying $100 or $200 to be there. But we wanted to keep the entry point really low to encourage farmers to come. So I don't know how we cut through that misconception. <coughs> where that's the, you know, it's a really hard thing for farmers to take a Saturday and come. So we've tried to get rid of all the barriers we could to that. I would suggest reaching out to the Hadley Agricultural Commission we, or we, committee and, yeah. uh, and kind of spread the word, and they can get that out there to all the farmers. Absolutely. And if somebody wants to be a vendor, is there a place they can uh, go to just me. to see you? Yeah. <laughs> it's me. Okay. Um, and it'll get, uh, after we get, after we, we didn't want to be presumptuous, so we haven't posted any links or ability or infrastructure to sign up yet. So once once you guys approve, then we'll move forward, and we should have a link up in, in a week and a half or two. So um, and I can share that link uh, too. You know, the thing is, is that um, we do curate who is at the festival only because we don't want, you know, toy sellers from somewhere else to come in. And we try to, we have some criteria for participation. You can only sell what you make or that is produced locally, whether it's food or craft. Um, um, and then we do have a category for small businesses, but it's a very, it's as a percentage of the overall, it's about 5% of the vendors who we allow to do that. So really, it's really a good balance of nonprofits, uh, nonprofits who come information will provide activities, farmers, crafters. Um, we do, we do, we are very careful about that because there are a lot of um, carnivals around. But this is we're, this is a different <coughs> kind of event. Great. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good. Can we have a motion? Is motion. Yeah. Second. Okay. Thank you. And subject to. Absolutely. We have a yeah, coordination all meeting. All the sign-offs from DPW Public Safety. Mm -hmm. Any other interested parties? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. The fire Aye. chief Aye. and oh. the <coughs> fire chief and a police chief approved it. So we just need to get, get been, in touch. Yeah, yeah, we've been in communication um, as yeah. we sort of built out the capacity <coughs> to be able to meet our responsibilities for the growth. It's, these are problems of success, so. Mm -hmm. The challenges of success. So. Yeah, and June sixth is right in the middle of asparagus season. Too, yes, thank so. good. Well, it's at the tail end, though, Joyce. It's sort of like May, May mm -hmm. beginning of May. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <coughs> peak. beginning of You're May right. peak. Right? It's peak. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you all. Thank right, you. Thank yeah, you. thanks for coming. <coughs> uh, the beer and cider garden. All right. Well, I'm here to um, seek permission to use the comma again for another four Fridays that Andrew, Sam, and I will be coordinating, um, uh, having music and games and food, local beer, and very local cider. Um, all and then just highlighting all the the food and beer and cider, everything highlighting um, Hadley agricultural businesses. Um, farm businesses. So everybody who took part last year from Hadley, and uh, I think we're going to continue that this year. It was so great, and mm -hmm. most of you came. So you know, it was fun. Yeah. I don't know if you have any questions. I heard lots of positive well, well, you feedback didn't come from it last last year. So. I heard nothing but positive feedback yeah. last yeah. year. Yeah, that's great. great. That's great. We felt the same way. My dog even liked it. His dog. We get a look of, look of beer. <laughs> no, he just like laid on the ice cubes that were falling down. <laughs> 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 yeah. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All abstain. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, we didn't. You want to vote on the asparagus? Before I interrupted you, or we did, we actually we did vote, but we could take it again. I should have said any more yeah. discussion, and you said something. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but one time I'd say not. Does anybody <laughs> have any discussion? Uh, do you want to vote on it again, John? Yeah. All, All in favor of the asparagus festival? Aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. Um, we can move on to, I think we got them all there, so we can move on to public comments. Uh, we can open this up, anything that anybody has for public comment. 
just please limit your comments to three minutes so that other people can uh, right. speak. So uh, go ahead, sir, just maybe. Uh, My name is Tom yeah. Weinzick. Yeah. Uh, I own the property directly behind Escalon Cafe and <coughs> directly to the west as well. So my property encompasses their entire bounds. Okay. A okay. um, couple issues I have. Uh, I was at the planning board last night and the parking is out of control there. I own the house directly behind Escalon and they're actually using my driveway to come into the parking lot. And that whole area has been completely destroyed. And as far as the rear of the parking behind <coughs> Esalon, all the cars are supposed to park towards Route 9 and one single line of parking facing towards Route 9. And they're supposed to be, from my property line, there's supposed to be 11 foot green space, which they totally did away with and made it parking. So now the parking comes right up to my property line and they park the cars towards Route 9 and towards the south. When they park towards the south, which is not what the site plan shows, the lights go right in the kitchen, right in the living room of my house. So that's why when it was designed, there was no parking facing to the south. All the parking was facing towards Route 9. So when they came in, there was one <coughs> row of parking this way. Mm -hmm. No parking behind. And now, by doing away with that green area, they got an extra 11 feet, so they bring the aggregate right up to the arborvitae so when the cars pull in there the headlights are right in my windows and that's not part of the original site plan i can show you i've got it with me um what did the planning board tell you last night uh well they they don't address parking the parking is controlled by the select board is what i was told the street parking is street controlled parking. by the select board right. <coughs> not, not property parking. well <coughs> the other issue is that the parking that's going on on the common and in front of my house and in front of the driveway where the tenants can't get their mail because the cars are... I actually went there today. This is at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the easiest time of day, and this car is parked right on the sidewalk, right on West Street, so the pedestrians can't get by. Um, this would be hard for you guys to understand because this is where they're crossing over my driveway in over the lawn to get into Escalon's driveway. Um, this is the row of cars that are parked to the south behind the S line. That all the headlights go right into the house. Um, and just so that. So your house is on the other side of the On the Arbor south, Vitae. right behind S line, right? But behind the Arborvitae. Correct, okay. correct. But the, the Arborvitae's, then it's supposed to be 11 feet towards S line, a green area. Whose Arborvitae are they? I not. I think S line planted you, them, you but. You did not plan them. I did not plan them. Okay. No. So in order for a border of, tell me if I'm wrong, but my memory is, I'm getting old. So my memory is telling me there has to be a three foot boundary from your property uh, to any border from another person's property. And I guess I would have to ask the building inspector that. Is that, do you remember any of that, John? Uh, yeah. Like there's gotta be a three foot. <laughs> I right. think that the keeps the overburden <laughs> on, on that client's property. Is, that's the reason yeah, they do that. So when they plant it, as the tree grows, the overburden is supposed to stay on the original owner's property. But the, I mean, even the with the fence or anything, there's a three foot right. barrier from one property yes. to the other, yes. if I remember. Yes. The problem okay. is you can put a three or four foot wide arborvitae in when you first plant it, right. which then turns into a eight or ten yeah. foot wide right. arborvitae. Sure. So now they're impeding on the neighbor's property and on their own property. And this is where we get property disputes, you know, mm -hmm. just between the neighbors. And, uh, you know, if you get along with your neighbor, that's one thing. But if you don't, then then you run into major issues like yeah. this. The only other the thing, before varieties, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, yeah. guys. Just just, just a, the final thing I want, to, I want to just bring to your attention as well. Because they are planning on leasing the original Charlie Cash's garage, so on and so forth here. <coughs> And this is what the other thing I, I positively want to resolve before they're granted any permission to do anything. This is the uh, this is actually the new That's survey that was just done. I understand. I just want to yeah. before they come for anything. This building right here, this is my property line here. Okay, mm -hmm. this building is supposed to be 15 feet off my property line. It's actually six inches on my property. I need to have that building put 15 foot 
off the nearest corner of my property. Tom, that's a, I'm sorry, just that, is that a new construction? No, no, that's no, that that's the one that's like it's falling existing. down. There yep. Kind of thing. And you know what irritates me, the reason I'm here, I wouldn't bother you folks with this, but I made a, con a connection with this gentleman that owns it. After Randy Eisen did the survey work, I went. I've got a hay field on this side, yeah, and I haven't been able to maintain it because when Charlie Brown owned it, he had so much debris there, and he wouldn't tell us where the property line was. So now that it's been surveyed, I wanted to clean it, and I tried to contact him two times, left my contact information at his business to address this issue, and I was told by multiple people that have been doing this, he says, I'm not moving anything for anybody. I don't have to. Um, the code is the code. The code is 15 feet from my property line, and that, that really needs to be resolved because my hay field can come all the way to here, and I'm losing like 30 feet. 30 feet times 750 is over half an acre of hay. So I, I would certainly address this also. My feeling is, is that the um, building inspector. I did already. And, and what, did, and what did he say? He said there's multiple other violations on the site. So there's, there's other things that The addition that he put on that was supposed to be an outdoor patio, yeah. well, that was passed on the original plan. But then he enclosed it. Then he put a roof on it. It was still legal because he had a canvas roof. But then he heated it. And I was in there today, and there was 24 people in that canvas area, which is supposed to be an open space, not enclosed and not heated. Mm -hmm. So he's so far out of control there. And I wouldn't be so upset except for the fact he wouldn't even acknowledge, you know, that I went there and called me back and say, okay, this is what we want to do. Did the planning board do a continuance or did they? Yes. Do, oh, oh. They were going to, he wanted, the lawyers were there last night and they were going to pass it and they continued it to March 17th. And, uh, what were they going to pass? Did, do you know? I don't even know. Okay. I, I just went there with, with these issues here and. I, like I said, are they, they're probably going to need a variance for that anyway, aren't they? They're, well, they, there's a bunch of things that they had to address. There yeah, yeah. There's drainage. Field. There's lighting. There's you know there's paving. A bunch of things. Tom, do you want to yeah. be put on the agenda for our meeting? Yes, period. I do. Yeah, you know, just so in the future. So, uh, yeah, if you, we, well, what I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> first Jurisdiction. Yeah. yeah. And it needs to be taken care of by the building inspector and any other property things that are going on over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have governance over yeah. the building inspector, but I think mm -hmm. that we need to. First of all, have the planning board make a decision, and then what we would go from there would be my purview. Yeah, that's what I would think, too. I mean, we have our only jurisdiction where you're talking is the Route 9 parking, and we've already put up no parking signs in certain areas of Route 9. Or, I'm sorry, West, West Street West there. Street. And, uh, you know, uh, we might be able to do something on the one common area where that person was parked in the sidewalk. That looked bad. See, that, that's the, the, the real problem, honestly, is that they're actually using my driveway and they're going across the actual lawn yeah. to enter their parking lot. <clears throat> they're going across the buffer between the sidewalk and the street now, not only parking on the street. Is that town? That's still we the town. Property. That's all town property. That's, that's all town, town yeah. property. And we yeah. own property on West Street also. So that <clears> piece <throat> that's in between the sidewalk and the road is, still, is town property. It's still yeah. town property. Yeah. So then, they're going across that. Yeah, and they also, on the okay. entrance, they made a, a temporary, they dumped a load of gravel and put three parking places right on the town, right on the town land. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I mean, who regulates this? I mean, there, there should be somebody there. Yeah. So that's why I'm here. Yeah. Okay. For, for the yeah. mailbox okay. issue. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, would you be okay with a no parking sign on your lawn there? Absolutely. My my sisters have put them up three times. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And every time they're put up, you go two days later, they either run over or thrown in the arborvitae. Okay. That's but, the truth. I mean, we'll put up a real one, but we, can we put this on a future agenda just for? No, we can put this on. A, let's put it on a future agenda. <coughs> we'll bring this up. Yeah. And maybe David could um, have a conversation with Tim Nyhart too. And, and, and then maybe we can talk with the DPW as well. I mean, if it gets too out of control, we can do something well, like happen at the it's end. It's a real mess, question. guys. That's yeah, the thing, yeah, you know? Yeah. And a lucrative business like that should have a little respect for his butters. And I happen to be the abutter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Know? And he's not talking to you, so that seems that's like really that's irritating. part of the problem, you know? too. That's, that's amplifying it. it so, um, you know, let's have it on another agenda and see Very what we can good. do. Well, and let's, have, let's see. If you can give Jennifer maybe yeah, your contact information, I could reach out to the property owner too and give him that and say, yeah. you should really just talk to this guy. Yeah, and, because the surveyor already spoke to him. He, yeah. he was so arrogant about his response. Yeah. It's like, I, the town can't make me do that. 
Hey, we all have rules to follow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. Yes. Appreciate it. <coughs> Appreciate um, it very much. Okay. It was a pleasure meeting you. Let me give you my card. Thank you. Is anybody else here for public comment? And uh, let's just do the public hearing real quick. Pins, change of ownership. It's actually the transfer of stock is what we're doing. Transfer of stock, I'm yes. sorry. Change of officers, not change of ownership. Yep. So um, this is, y'all have already voted on this on October 17th. I missed the advertisement requirements for that. So the ABCC just sent it back uh, two weeks ago. We advertised it, and mm -hmm. David and his partner Jim are here tonight in case y'all have any questions about the transfer of stock from Pins Hadley LLC to Pins Entertainment Group LLC. We'll let you know in a meeting. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Previously, y'all approved this change. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 You want to thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Um, let's do the budget presentation. <laughs> are you ready, Dave? I'm ready. Ready, ready when you are. All right. All right. Well, you, you go for it here. So, <coughs> first of all, I think you each get a budget book. Everybody gets prizes. Yeah, to the ones I have. <laughs> So this is uh, my presentation of the fiscal year 2021 budget. That's from July 1st, 2020 to uh, June 30th, 2021. Um, I already, already, already covered that. Yeah, give it back. Sure. The 2021 budget proposal is balanced based upon uh, recommended re uh, revenues, transfers from other funds, and recommended and adjusted um, uh, expenditures. Our revenues are $20,020,047 for the general fund and expenses of $20,609,000. Six fifteen dollars and transfers in from other funds are five hundred eighty nine thousand five hundred sixty eight to represent a balanced budget in the general. The enterprise funds choices would be uh, what page are you on? Uh, page you would eight. 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 No, I have to go. I would go. I think you're deeper than there. that. Are well, I'm just, you're that reading the I'm on page 18. Same chart. Yeah. Oh, I got 19. Sorry, page, page 19. Page 19. For the enterprise funds, the revenues are two million one hundred forty-six thousand nine sixty-seven, and the expenses are two million one hundred seventy-one thousand seven ninety-two. With transfers in of about 24825 in order to bring that into balance. We have a number of goals that this uh, budget is uh, designed to achieve. First of all, goal number one are human resources. Welcome, Ed O'Connor. Um, that we created the position in FY 2020 last year. So the FY 2021 budget is committed to sustaining funding for human resources services for 12 months. Goal number two is economic development planning. So goal 2.1 is for the select board to create a planner for economic development and budget and uh, grant writing. And the proposed budget supports a half-time planner starting in July 2020. The new planner will support the work of the planning board and the select board to create job opportunities, <coughs> expand the commercial and industrial tax base, write major grants, and add new revenues to the town of Hadley. Goal number three, supporting services. 3.1, we last year <coughs> we uh, deployed existing support staff to provide support to the 
tax collector, the treasurer, fire department, and board of health offices. This will allow department heads and key staff to focus on core responsibilities and to assign work to in a more focused way to support the, and maintain government for functions, goals, and objectives. So in this budget for 21, additional support staff are assigned to public works to increase effectiveness in providing services and to the police department to support their efforts in achieving accreditation. Goal 3.2, in last year we expanded the treasurer's hours by five to the, allow the position to devote more time for strategic financial management. Uh, this year, 21, tax collector and assistant tax collector hours are expanded by two and a half hours each per week to provide more time for customer service, billing, and collection. Goal 3.3, last year we initiated the senior tax work, uh, work program and the internship program and for this uh, fiscal year budget coming up, we continue these programs to add another level of support for routine functions, document scanning on the new digitized document management system, and other special projects. Goal four, public safety. Last, uh, back in 2017, 18, 19, and 20, uh, we added more staff, new functions, in order to uh, achieve uh, greater coverage for public safety, that's police, fire, ambulance, and dispatchers. In 2021, the town will continue to support advanced life care ambulance service for 24-hour coverage. Goal 4.1, um, yeah, I just covered that. Goal 5, public works. In FY19, we very well welcome Mr. Christopher Okafor as the new director of DPW. In 2021, we identified Public Works as the budget priority for this year, and the budget supports enhanced <coughs> services in cemetery, highway, building maintenance, water, and wastewater functions. Goal 5.1 in FY21. Uh, the town reviewed sewer and water rates as an ongoing process uh, and we <coughs> hope to settle on that in order to uh, increase function, uh, sustainable budgets for the water and wastewater uh, uh, <coughs> departments. Goal 5.2, a library position is added for cemetery care, building maintenance, custodial and water functions. 5.3, uh, we're planning for several retirements and replacement of long-term employees in core positions. Goal six, building operations. Um, in the budget for the current fiscal year, we have building operations which covers utility costs, sewer, water, electricity, heating, oil, gas, um, as well as IT, telephone, and other, other functions. We have them scattered over a number of uh, budgets. Since we're completing <coughs> three new buildings, it only makes sense to combine all and consolidate all of those budgets into one new budget for uh, operations. So funding for uh, building maintenance and operations consolidated into the 190 building operations and 490 building maintenance. Old standalone account such as 193, 196, 199 will be deleted from the budget. Uh, and this gives the uh, department heads more time to focus in on their core responsibilities rather than fretting about the water bill or the sewer bill or the telephone or the heating bill. Those will be handled by other folks. Um, goal 6.2, funding for the building maintenance program and operations will be in Increase to account for a net increase of two new buildings being added to the town of Hadley inventory of structures. Goal seven, financial management. First of all, OPEB. Um, we will continue to increase our annual OPEB contribution by two and a half percent to raise the annual contribution to 277,194 Ninety-five dollars 
Uh, this is in line with our long-established uh, funding schedule. Free cash. We're going to restart our free cash uh, program. Uh, we suspended our free cash program in FY19 and 20 in order to account for new ambulance service and the lack of certified free cash in 2020. Uh, and it's time for us to restart that free cash policy. Free cash policy is to reduce our reliance upon free cash for operating expenses uh, by $75,000 annually till that uh, reaches zero. The number that we're using for FY21 is 140000 so you're about uh, one year away from bringing that down to zero. Um, Stabilization fund. All right, we took money from stabilization and transferred it over to OPEB, which is a very smart way of investing those monies. But in FY21, we will use free cash in the amount of $246,804 to replenish the stabilization fund. Unfunded pension liability. This is something new and different. It's an emerging threat that it's, uh, people have taken seriously enough that there was specialized training at the Massachusetts Municipal Association annual meeting. Um, our retirement <coughs> system, Hampshire County Retirement System, carries a uh, unfunded liability of approximately $200 million, which is spread out all over the county. So it sounds like a big number, but our share of it's much smaller than that. Uh, they have us on a 12 to 13 year pay down schedule, but the payoff of the amortization of that, uh, of that unfunded liability increases our costs year to year. So to mitigate that cost, <coughs> I'm proposing that we create for the first time uh, a new special stabilization account to mitigate the, the cost increase for, uh, for the unfunded pension liability. And I'm proposing that we use a starting uh, figure of $75,000. 7.5, um, we will similarly look at the, uh, at the enterprise funds and make sure that they're contributing their share of that 75000 so that those costs are evenly apportioned between the general fund and the enterprise funds. Debt management. Uh, in addition to our, our obligatory debt payments, we will add an additional $100,000, one time only, to pay down short-term principal within the levy limit. The goal here is to create borrowing capacity for much needed capital items without impacting taxes or cutting funding from operational budgets. So this would be in lieu of putting money into a capital stabilization account, reduce our short-term principles so that we can have more capacity to borrow for such things as emergency generators. The alignment of the, of the town meeting sequences um, in the past, we have used uh, both the annual town meeting and the special town meeting to prepare a fiscal budget that meant that their budget season was in, in effect 12 months long. So we were constantly working on budgets. Um, with the influx of the certified free cash that we just got and the increased revenues that we have from our business district, I think that for the first time we can change our pattern so that we do the annual budget at the annual town meeting, be done with it, and then reserve the special town meeting for policy, bylaws, <coughs> zoning, and capital. So that'll free up departments to for six months to work on other things other than budgets. Open items in the budget include um, my position, uh, announced my retirement effective to December 31st, 2020. I've added a funding for a new town administrator, 
um, and this will be contingent upon contract negotiations with the new person. Our economic development planner is shown as an employee, but we may want to think about this as a con contracted services with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commissioner. School budget, the school department is still developing its budget. Final figure will be available when the school committee <coughs> holds its public hearing on March 31st. Water and sewer rates is an ongoing topic. And then administrative charges to the enterprise funds. In response to questions about prior year's administrative charge formulas, the formulas for determining the hidden charges to taxpayers was revised to include uh, estimated amounts as opposed to verified amounts. The result is a loss of $109,557 in revenues to the general fund, but it takes that pressure off the enterprise fund, so it could be an acceptable trade-off. Financial management team will be meeting next Thursday, not tomorrow, but next Thursday, to talk about the formulas and make a solid recommendation to the select board at your next meeting. I want to thank the department heads for all of their support and their help in putting together a budget uh, that works. Uh, this document is very complex. I certainly expect you to take it under advisement but I couldn't put it together without the help of elected officials, town departments, uh, boards and committees, and all of our advisors. We're fortunate to have high quality, highly skilled and trained, hardworking government workforce and effective leadership to guide the community. I look forward to discussing this in the future with the select board and the finance committee and the capital planning committee. Do you have any questions? I have one question. Yes. The part-time planner, does that fall under the planning board or town hall general government? Does I put it in the planning board budget. They did not request it, so you'll see it as an administra administrator's recommended in increase. But in the planning board, would oversee that. <coughs> they should coordinate, so that's yeah. it seemed logical to put it all together. Especially if that person is going to be writing grants for the town. Mm -hmm. That should be between both boards. I personally would like to see that position be a full-time person, just because I think that would be a more effective position in what we're looking for out of that position. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I know I personally would advocate for us trying to find money to do that, you know, with the finance committee. And, you and sell enough beer, and we're going to get that position. Yeah, Absolutely. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. And I, I echo what. That, that was the, the one thing that struck me. Um, mm -hmm. And two things on that. One is really what we're doing is making an investment because, to, yes. as Joyce just said, the <coughs> opportunity for somebody to, uh, to find grant opportunities for us to take advantage of to, to would bring additional money in is critical. Um, and we're also talking about the economic development side of it, so having somebody boots on the ground doing a lot of legwork that could even just one business coming to town that doesn't exist right now that increases our revenue base is mm -hmm. huge, and it's an ongoing revenue stream created. Um, and the reality is when you offer a half-time position, you are immediately limiting the pool of candidates. So mm -hmm. That's what I see, too. Maybe. Right, something like that. You're either going to wind up with somebody who's maybe between jobs, they take the half-time job, but they still have an eye out looking for a full-time job. Mm -hmm. You may find somebody who's wanting to wind down. Um, so they're full-time, but they're kind of winding their way out of the career. Um, not that that's a bad thing, but again, you're, you're, you're limiting. Um, or you get somebody who's just so green, they may or may not be able to be um, effective. And I, just with a $20 million budget and our reliance on the commercial corridor, we have to make some, I think, you know, kind of some dramatic changes that are going to take a long time. And but somebody, too, I mean, you have to think about, because I do as you get older, you think about, I'm not going to work no 40, 50 hours a week, and if somebody's got a good gig for me to work 30 hours a week, other than the 60, 
and you can be doing what you like doing, but in a smaller capacity, then sometimes that also plays to the benefit of, of whoever they're serving too. So there's kind of two ways to look at that, whether it's a part-time plus position, close to full-time, you know, and seeing how that goes. And if it demands a more hourly rate then or more time, then, you know, that's something to certainly look at. And again, I think it depends on funding and what we can afford. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I was uh, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, going to come down Money to talks. That, but I just think, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to put the stake in the ground right at the front of the process <coughs> for the, so the finance committee knows where, you know, you, you just said it, I'm saying it, you know, everybody else can have their own opinion, but um, I, I would want to be looking at this budget with an eye towards that being an unbelievably critical position for this town at this point in time. And just to reiterate what you're saying, or my two cents is just I want to see somebody that's really, really good in that position and really a self-starter and is looking to look for opportunities and all those things. And as much as I want them to support the planning board, I don't want them to just get in the planning board and not be able to get out of there, be able to do things out in the community and see things around. And I just feel like we need to pay a person to do that. You get what you pay for. I do see Joyce's side. Maybe that person is out there that is happy with a part-time position and, and willing to do it, but I just see trying to get that person in full-time is going to attract good candidates. So, yeah, so that's know. all. Yeah. So do we yeah, maybe consider we putting do. them under general government, though, if we're going to expect them to be doing Because <coughs> then maybe we could, since we have full-time people here to manage general government right, yeah. versus a part-time planning board staff, then, I mean, obviously a lot of their duties are going to involve the planning board, but just need yeah. the other stuff too that's going to be. And, and the planning board has always used the planning commission. Mm -hmm. Exactly, uh, yeah. They they're, meet with them frequently throughout the year and, and uh, do plans for them and everything, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I was really imagining it more as a town, town hall position, recognizing the obvious relationship between this person and the planning board. Yeah. Because, it seems, you know, it seems like the state has got a little bit more broader outlook on the grants too. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. we're going to be able to apply for a lot more grants where in the past we weren't able to get the grants because of our financial situation here. Okay. You know, and and further on down the line, if they're going to be open to all the communities at any rate, you know, we, we may need somebody to, to try to write these grants. and. And get some some funding for us. Yeah. You know, I don't see it coming from the federal level for a long, forever, pretty much right now. <coughs> but yeah. you know, back in like '88 when they did the sewer plan, it was 70 or 85 percent funded by the federal government. You know, through EPA. Something like that just ain't coming down the road. You know? But mm -hmm. if, if we find the right person, though, the position could pay for itself. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If yeah. we found the right person and was aggressive enough and pursuing them. So. And, and just, it might be something where it, we don't see a payback in year one, year two, but, yeah. right. you know, it might take five years for this yeah. to start paying off, but I think it will be, and it's about getting that person established and, and plan, you know, I think a lot of grant you know, writing like, and that kind of thing is yeah. seeing what we have to do to be able to get well, the grants. On the other the hand, the, the planning board for two years now has said it's, it's time for a planner, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's definitely a need there also, whether it's full time or part time, depending, you know, depending mm -hmm. on what, you want, what you're looking at. Yep. And, and who you get to apply in. Well, it sounds, <coughs> sounds like we're, we're relatively unanimous in our. <coughs> Outlook on that. So, can we? Like thirty-five thousand dollars somewhere in the budget. Look at the wrist, David. Look at the wrist. <laughs> That's what you got. He's smart, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are we cutting yeah. out? Uh, are we good on that, or do we sure. want to? I, I don't think we have to identify anything right now. I, yeah. I have one more question on another part of the budget, and I don't want to <coughs> skip over the planner section, but I, you know. Are we good on the, you guys good on the plan? Mm -hmm. My question was just on the this re retirement stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. Is this something, so we'll have a stabilization fund. We'll be putting money in there. We'll be taking any money out and be paying Hampshire retirement from that fund, or it's just to 
that account will account will build and one day will make a payment to that system. Yeah, so we're, I, we're, I don't understand we're, the we're just we're just looking at this this uh, unfunded liability seriously for the first time. Our assessment for That's what you have OPEP for though. This is different this is a, from OPEP. This is your, uh, your pension as opposed to your health care pensions. I don't get any. <laughs> um, so that would be pension for <coughs> town employees. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they pay into it. Your they town pay. employees pay into mm -hmm. their own pension. Mm -hmm. Are we matching it? Are we matching their pension? Well, we're doing we're doing a couple of things here. How well, does that? It's an ongoing thing. As they retire, that whole pen goes up. Yeah, we this, is this is an I, 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 I know, but but. So you pay into your pension as yeah, an employee. Yes. Yeah. And, and, <coughs> and this might be and something match, we take and who matches to talk it? about. I just am confused about the function of this. So the, the employee puts a certain amount of money Correct. in, but yeah. because it's a defined benefit plan. The employee is guaranteed, based on a formula, a certain payout, right? right. So <coughs> for life after you retire. For life after you retire. Right. So regardless of what the employee is putting into it, there's a, some smart actuary sitting off on the side saying, okay, in order for me to pay the proverbial Joyce Municipal employee, um, you know, 80% because she maxes out of her height, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, forty-two thousand dollars for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. They're figuring out how much money you actually need and rates of return and all of that stuff to come up with that number. Mm -hmm. So yes, the, there is money going into it, but that doesn't like match what that yeah. actual life. I, I don't. In the I don't know offhand what the percentage of county retirement is right now. Our portion of the payment. Do you have that, David? Is that on here? Yeah. So the uh, the employees pay up to eleven percent. Yeah. Um, but how much does the town pay on that? Well, we pay a, we pay a total of one hundred and forty no one million four hundred thousand dollars in round figures For annually. The whole town. Okay. Nine hundred sixty nine thousand of that, or <coughs> two thirds, is the unfunded liability amortization. Okay. All right, and that amortization increases over time until the whole thing is paid off. So that increase from one year to the next is about seventy one thousand dollars. So we're not talking about... But it's ongoing. As, as another person retires, that may go up a percent. Yeah, or they live yeah. longer, yeah. the actuarial yes. tables. I mean, there's all sorts, of, all sorts of variables that work here. Uh, rate of return based <coughs> upon investments, which typically they're overstated. So, you know, how long have I been looking at a 15-year pay down of the retirement system while I've been here for 15 years and I haven't seen it get anywhere close to seeing that thing get paid off. Yeah. So this is going to be around for a while and the assessment just keeps on increases. And it, it was a liability because we took X amount of dollars out originally six years ago or seven years ago when I first started on the board and we were just covering the amount. That, that was her OPEP though. Yeah. We were just covering the amount that we needed for the people that retired. So now we're over and above that at this point. Yeah, that's that's for OPEP. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is different from what he's talking yeah, about. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I understand, but yeah. Yeah. you need to understand OPEP before you understand what he's trying to do here now to make another stabilization account. You know. Yeah. So, so what I'm what I'm stabilization. Just sorry? going back to the question yeah. that, that Christian is asking. So with OPEB, we took the approach of actually putting the money into an investment account with um, using Bartholomew as our advisor. So that money is actually in the Make market. Mm -hmm. So it has the opportunity, you know, to grow, not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. um, right. So it's it as, a, as a trust. Yeah. It, right. As a trust. So well, why, why a stabilization fund rather than a trust? Is it uh, because uh, the, I'm not aware of any legislation out there that establishes a trust for the pension liability. Okay. Okay. Again, we're just okay. looking at this for the very first time, so there may be okay. elements to this that I am not aware of. Um, but the, 
the idea that I'm trying to achieve, at least initially, is to take the edge off of the annual increases that we're very likely to, the, to, to en encounter mm -hmm. as the Hampshire retirement system. And all the retirement systems have unfunded liabilities, not just Hampshire. Uh, but as they try to get that under control for their members, um, we're going to be paying more per year if we can blunt that, then that frees up dollars for other services in the budget. Okay. Why, so couldn't, why couldn't we put more in OPEB in the trust and invest that money as we're doing now? And once you put it in OPEB, it stays in OPEB. Right. Yeah. You can't utilize it as a trust, <coughs> trust account. So, so maybe we should put this money, I've got it, in the stabilization account, but we should just maybe talk to Dan Carey and Senator Cumberford about some legislation for being able to do a trust. I was going to say, and where are they at with this is funding the Hampshire County Retirement Act? Or they would say, why don't you just increase your payment? I mean, you have a minimum obligation that you have to pay annually. They call it a million dollars that we're paying. We could pay a million seventy-five. Can't do that either. Not individually. Oh, uh, yeah. Across the board. Yeah. And I think Davis pursued that. Yeah. So we explored this with the Hampshire retirement system and said, can we give you more? And they said, no. <laughs> um, what? The, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Your money is no good here. Yeah. <laughs> it has I, something to do with how it's chartered in the law. I don't fully understand. I don't think anybody really does. Because, all right, everybody just tilted their head and we, huh? <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's we're, we we can't prepay like we can't owe that. Yes, we did, did any any yeah. pension system I've ever seen before. You have a, a minimum minimum contribution amount, but then there's a band over which you can in, indeed overpay. So if you have if you're a, a business right and you have a good year from a profit standpoint, you know that you could put in an extra amount into that pension. Like, willingly accepted that it just gets worked into the calculation so as an employee like you said, you mean, an employee putting no no employer no he well each individual can do what they want because I you know opened a couple of <coughs> savings accounts and IRAs over the years you know to help when I do retire to, to take the balance of whatever I'm not getting from retirement yeah. Yeah, so okay. uh, there were a number of things that I did uh, before coming up with this uh, recommendation. I, <coughs> I contacted a couple of other the towns to see if they would be interested in pooling resources. They were not interested in spending money that way. I contacted the Hampshire Retirement System about some sort of prepayment or excess payment. They didn't see a way to make that happen. Um, so I think we're we're down to a special stabilization fund. I think that's the best way to start this journey. Well, basically, this is just for when the bill finally arrives that we know is coming at some point. Exactly. Yeah. So next year you would have an additional seventy-five thousand stored away that you can apply towards the annual increase of the amortization schedule. So the only real well, so it, so follow that logic. So. We're putting 75 over here so that when the bill comes in, we take it out of there and put it in. But it only works if you keep taking money and then putting it back in. Right. So what you're doing is you're taking one-time money, mm -hmm. right, kind of throwing it into a savings account yep. so that you don't then need to take it out of your operating. Is that what we're doing? That's what I'm trying to do. But then if you put it into a stabilization account, does it take a town meeting to remove it from the stabilization account? Two-thirds majority does. vote. So. Yep. And what do we need two thirds majority to create the stabilization? No. Right? You, know, you no. just need a simple majority. Used to be you needed a two thirds majority, but they changed the law, so now you just so need you a simple majority. Create, create a simple majority and put, to take it out. You need two oh boy, this is going to take a long time discussing yeah. this on town for <coughs> And why? And just one more question: Is why seventy-five thousand? Why not thirty-five thousand? Then we can we see forty thousand difference for another purpose. You can. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think. But is there a reason behind seventy-five? Seventy-five. Number? Seventy-five is because your increase for the first year paying down the amortization is uh, seventy-one uh, two eighty-one. 
And that's for okay, so, and that's <coughs> fiscal year 22. Okay. Why well, is it going to take a little sleep time on this to think about it? Yeah, that one. So anyway, <laughs> okay. So that's one we're going to have to think about how to explain it and mm -hmm. how to uh, what to do with that. Mm -hmm. It's I'm sure standard the course would love it. Mm -hmm. It's to soften the blow of an unpredictable billing cycle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 As long as we can meet and pay the other bills. The other bills are predictable. <laughs> <laughs> so any other questions or comments, things to discuss? Finance committee, do you guys have any input right now? Or? All right. Do we have any introduction? No, I mean, I, I think this, this issue of the 75000 is a prudent move. Yeah. Because if the state comes up with another solution that's maybe financing the debt over a longer period, <laughs> we're going to have a pot of money that we can pull back in, which, correct, mm -hmm. with the vote of the town meeting. If it turns out that they present a bill to the 360 <coughs> something towns in the state, and we're one of five maybe that have actually put aside money for this, we'll be in a better position than everybody else. For a little bit of pain, I think this is a prudent move. Mm -hmm. Okay, and forward yeah. forward thinking for something that we all know is out there. So. Why ignore it? Yeah. And a lot of the communities around here you talk to are basically ignoring it, correct? But so far. So far. Okay. So far. You know. know. Probably what's well, been four years now since we did <coughs> actually we put that money into the old town? Four or five years now? So we Yeah. 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 Since 2014. So, David, I do have um, one overarching question. So, when we go to the expenses, which is page 44, I think. Uh, the infamous column H, <laughs> which is the uh, administrator's adjustments. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I mean, we don't need to run through all of these right now, but have you communicated these adjustments to the department heads, or will you in, in I will. I have not. Okay. Because that always uh, creates a bit of a ruckus within 24 hours. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Oh, well, just, yeah. oh, not even 24? <laughs> was it, what, one? <laughs> Half an hour? Just by saying that right now, she's getting emails. <laughs> there might have been a text. Yeah, yeah there might have been a text, yeah. Yeah, so Finance Committee is going to be meeting with a number of departments uh, next week, I think it is, and uh, certainly they need to have a copy of their budgets as modified by me. So. Is there an explanation? So, I mean, just for example, if I went to, you know, the building inspector's department and I see that you've made an adjustment, would, will I be able to find the rationale for that adjustment in here? Yes. Are you documented? Yes. Okay. Right, so I'll just say that I'm glad that we're moving the utilities and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff into a single account or a couple of accounts. That way, like you said, the library isn't trying to pay their oil bill and Things like that. Mm -hmm. so They're going to have electricity. What's wrong with you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, again, poor, poor competencies. You want people doing what they're trained to do, not right. you know, dealing with things that. They give more flexibility, too. So yeah. if mm -hmm. one runs over budget, we can end up building somewhere else. Exactly. See, they're already coming on the heat when we got it here. Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, anything else on the budget? Because I just wanted to note on our, because you guys have sent out your meeting schedule, um, and I just wanted to follow up that on March 18th, like after you guys have kind of done your first couple rounds of meeting with the departments, to kind of come back and just meet with us, report if there are any issues, anything that our attention should be drawn to mm -hmm. on that date. And then April Fool's Day, April 1st, we would have the opportunity to meet with the 100 and 200 series budgets because those two will be done at that point along with the 700, 800, and 900. And then on April 15th, meet with you guys again to kind of get that status. And then on April 22nd, we'd have the opportunity to meet with 300, 400, 500, and 600 series budgets. So I think that's how we're gonna go about reviewing it this year is finance committees meeting with all the departments we can kind of hear from them where it's at and then if we feel the need to meet with any departments individually we can pull them in and talk to them or if they want to come talk to us they could do it at that time so we'll just basically have four meetings talking about the budget 
two with the finance committee, two with departments. So only if there's a disagreement between the department and the finance committee, basically, they can come kind of plead their case to us again? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then kind of rely on the finance committee's recommendation for everything uh, up until then. Mm -hmm. If that sounds good. Sure. Since can, we I, can I just be introduced to the new, I know Paul, but I don't feel like I know this okay. other young gentleman. Dylan. 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 Hi. Hi, I'm Joyce York. Hi, Joyce. I'm Dylan. Dylan. Just joined the finance committee. Last name? Mance. Mance. Okay. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to Thanks meet you. for joining. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want to tell you me what you do for a living? Uh, I work at an investment company in Amherst. Work with Kyle and Dave uh, doing mixed use buildings mm -hmm. in downtown. Nice. Great, great to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, also for yeah. joining the Finance Committee. Yeah, it's nice to see some fresh faces, so thank you. Uh, oh, you're okay. offending the other one. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Just, no. So we're not trying to offend it. You're saying you found the one person in town that you don't know? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> My God, how did that happen? I don't know. I'm <laughs> She's old, I guess. <laughs> Great. All right. Any other questions on the budget? We don't need to vote on anything. We can move on to our next thing. We'll allow these gentlemen to go home for the night. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you David, for Thank you. running us through it. And uh, I'm sure it'll kick off uh, many heated discussions. <laughs> Robust. <laughs> Robust. Ed here for anything. HR is on standby with the employees. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> EAP referrals. <laughs> And were you here to talk with anything specific? Uh, yeah. Just the yeah. town administrative thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, the DPW director on uh, topic, and then yeah. um, there might be one or two yeah. others. Let's, let's jump into that real quick. So uh, 8.2, DPW director contract clarification. We're just going to put that on hold right now um, and probably <coughs> schedule an executive session to talk about that a little bit more on the board. <coughs> no, on the third. Is it the third or the fourth? The fourth. fourth. The fourth. Um, and then we can just go right into town administrator search. Um, I, I don't know how we, where we want to start this. We kind of left it off. We were going to talk about um, you know whether we wanted to do it internally, externally. Uh, whether David would kind of spearhead the, the search. Actually, I don't know if, Ed, you were here when we talked about that, too, no, no, how that was. was. Uh, you were gone. gone. Yeah. yeah, and then possibly hiring a an outside recruiting firm for those services. Mm -hmm. um, David and I did get a chance to speak with two different organizations that um, that are that are you know uh, recruiting services, and uh, you know I really <laughs> will speak that I think it would be a good decision for us to go to the recruiting um, option. I, I think that would how much? It's around going to be 10 around grand. ten grand. Mm. Uh, one of them said they could do it for under ten, uh, so it's going to be that much. But it does. I think it really opens up the pool of candidates, and I think a lot more candidates feel comfortable going to those firms and those individuals and talking to them about Hadley, about what we need, as opposed to some external candidate trying to get a hold of one of us on the select board to find out what's going on. It provides a buffer where if somebody might be thinking about changing positions but isn't going to make it public because there's a lot they put on the line when they do that, they're going to feel more comfortable calling one, one of these people and talking with them about it than possibly letting it out into the public that they're looking for a new position. So I think that's one of the main services they supply, as well as you know, um, getting to know more about what our needs are exactly to kind of describe the town. Um, they're going to post the job across multiple services, MMA, um, their networks. A lot of these people that run the recruiting firms know a majority of the people in town administrator positions and coming up positions in the Commonwealth, as well as neighboring states. Um, 
they would do candidate screening and really get us down to a handful of candidates that we can then choose from instead of about us, us trying to screen 30 candidates. I'm sorry? Where did you hear about us since you came out from? Oh, um, I saw you all on Indeed, actually. Indeed. Um, but since we're on the topic, I didn't get a chance to talk to everybody. Yeah. I had to withdraw my application because I'm just I don't know if you heard or not, but I wanted to tell you face to face. So. I ju we just saw that, so yeah. you're going to be doing active duty. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you are. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, so I have to quickly change my plans. It wouldn't be fair to the town if I. Is there any time limit on how long for uh, active duty? They're about 10 months these days, give or take. Could be nine and a half, could be 11. Mm -hmm. And it would start on July 16th, is that the date? Yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know, I had one plans and, you know, the good Lord changed them for me. So, yeah. it's all good. Wait, 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 so Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam, yeah. <laughs> Sam, yeah. 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 <laughs> Put the Lord's hands on that one. <laughs> Hopefully, to keep you safe, that's all. I appreciate um, it. You know, I think just on this topic. <laughs> I certainly don't want to waste money. Um, this is probably the most important hire for the town of Hadley and that, that I expect. <coughs> no, no offense. I mean, no, the HR is pretty important, but I mean, yeah. it, this is a significant position um, and not making sure that we have um, fully, you know, full access to any viable candidate. You know, I think it's, I think I just think it's critical. Um, the list that you just rattled off, you know, it, it applies to any industry where you're, you know, we're all faced sometimes with going, making a decision, go through a headhunter, or place an agency, or whatever. And there's so much involved with it. Um, you know, they they can make direct phone calls to a sitting municipal what, town administrator or somebody who's got their public administration, whatever, again, that these people know about and say, hey, look at, are you aware of the fact that Hadley's hiring? So a lot of people aren't necessarily, you know, actively looking and they haven't really thought about it. So, you know, you, you could kind of wrestle up some pretty good candidates through that process as well. And I just think it's too important for the sake of $10,000. Making the wrong hire is going to cost us an awful lot more than that. So. Yeah, and uh, I tried as well. Um, I've been doing some traveling, so I didn't get a huge opportunity, but last year there were 33 towns in Massachusetts changed town administrator, town manager role. That's 10%. Yeah, and seven of those towns tried to do it on their own. I tried getting a hold of one town, um, their select board, that initially tried to do it on their own. I don't know if they hired someone and it didn't work out. But then they went to a recruiter after um, trying on their own and kind of and that not working out. So, um, and I wanted to get some experience from their perspective, but but I wasn't not able to contact everybody. To, so, I can understand using a I'm not itchy nose. Uh, I understand using a headhunter for uh, gathering candidates, but I think in the bottom line. I would like to see a committee pick oh. that person. Oh, yeah. That, that, yeah. Would, that would be what it is. They, they would basically kind of so for get $10, us down dollars to is a lot of money. five, let's say, four to five candidates. It could be less, but probably no more than five. And then we would kind of have input and be able to choose. I, I personally think this is something that requires a, a big time commitment and something that we should treat really seriously. This is something we've set ourselves up to really be have time and be able to make this work. And so we do have time and a way to screw it up, but I also think if we do, that's not a good thing. We could be in a <coughs> position where we have the best intentions and then we set ourselves back. And I feel like oh, I hiring don't mind, this I don't mind hiring somebody to do the legwork. Yeah, yeah. But I certainly don't want them to be the one to. Oh no, they wouldn't do that. We the, would still the, have a committee decision. Yeah. and we would still yeah. be choosing and even those four or five candidates could come into the in front of the select board for an interview as well. So yeah, and typically what they do is, I mean, they'll they'll do that initial screening, you know, and 
they may screen people out, but you all, you can always say to them, oh, can we look at the pile that you screened out? And if we say, well, I don't know, I would have interviewed that person, you know, yeah. okay. then they, they'll throw them in. And the difference, firms had t different approaches to doing that. Mm -hmm. Some people would just screen everybody and then give us a handful. Other people, we could be more involved in that screening. Okay. So mm -hmm. it was there was some differences there. Mm -hmm. And if they don't find us a qualified candidate that's the, of the right fit, what happens to our money? Well, one, it seems like everybody, I, I asked them basically the, the one firm would give us a one-year guarantee, so the person we hired, if that didn't work out after a year, they would automatically help us find another person, no charge. Okay. Um, the other firm, I'm not sure. They didn't, they, say, anything they didn't like say anything in particular. So. so I'd be much more inclined to go with that firm. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And a little bit of a guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Interesting. I don't know if we would, you know, it depends on who we went with. One seemed to be over 10, one was under 10, so depending on putting it out to bid, you did, know. Did you have a clear preference between the two of you about one firm over another? Well, I, I was leaning one way, and then David talked to someone that was recommending the other way. So it was, it was, uh, I, yeah, I, I think they're pretty comparable, um, but it, it, it's tricky. Yeah, there, there, are main, there are three main firms that do this work. There's Municipal Resources Incorporated out of Meredith, New Hampshire. They've done a lot of work in the Commonwealth. They've, they did our fire management study for us a long time ago. Um, then Community Paradigm Associates. Uh, that's basically three people. Bernie Lynch, former city manager of Lowell, and John Petron, 40 years in the business, the retired town manager for Burlington, Massachusetts, and then a journalist out of Lowell. They do, they do a lot of work. And then the Collins Center out of UMass Boston does a, this kind of work as well. I talked to a colleague who's actively looking for work. Um, he, is, he has encountered all three organizations. Uh, of the three, he felt that Municipal Resources Incorporated had a better feel for small towns and understood how to handle candidates better. Um, CPA was more oriented towards larger towns, bigger, bigger, uh, uh, bigger pools of uh, candidates for towns of 25,000 or, or higher. Uh, and the Collins Center just felt like one person trying to do it all and felt rushed. So Which one? Yeah, it's my guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the one year guarantee. Uh, MRI definitely had that guarantee. Yep. Meredith. It's the people in New Hampshire. So would we need to put this up for bid if it's under $10,000 and it's a, uh, so I mean, why don't we just, I'll make a motion that we hire MRI, MRI will say. Yeah. Out uh, of Meredith, New Hampshire. To, to handle this <coughs> headhunting for the town of yeah, I'll second that for discussion. Uh, any okay. You, my, my only pause on that yeah. was with a search committee, they were thinking it was going to be over 10, but we could we could uh, talk to them, I guess. And see. With a search committee, it would be over 10? Yeah. What's the search I don't know. Do versus uh, the search committee would be like us having a committee that was involved in the process. So it would cost us more money if we had a search committee? Yeah. Because there's more, because there's <laughs> more, because there's more, um, have back and forth and more possibly visits to the town. Yeah. Those kind of things. I could see if they're doing the interviewing <coughs> process and the selection process, but if they're just finding candidates and submitting them to us, they're just yeah. saying, here you go, this is why we picked them or did That's why I say, let's yeah. let's see what we can do. Let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah, it yeah. seems like you're, you're paying you two for say? two things, and, and I do want to hear from you. Oh, I was going to say, I'm sure we could tailor our agreement, um, you know, look at what their standard is. We obviously want the final say, so depending on what their $10,000 gives us, if their final say is included in the $10,000, maybe we remove that, and then now we're at 9000 or whatever the case may be. Yes, yeah. so I'll amend my motion that subject to successful contract and negotiations, we mm -hmm. hire MRI. Yeah. I amend my second. <laughs> okay. 
So it seems like you're buying two things. You're buying <coughs> their ability to have connections. You're buying their Rolodex. So I know that's an old-fashioned term, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, got, I got one in my office. And the other thing you're buying is their time. You know, how much yeah. time are they going to spend in, and my sticky notes. in investigating the backgrounds of your candidates? Do you do you have a take on this whole situation? Uh, you know, I think a, a one-year um, guarantee is definitely a strong backing to the work they put forward, um, especially since uh, over the last three to four years, you can see several small towns, you know, Douglas, Palmer, that have all hired uh, town managers or administrators, and within six months, they're out the door. So I think um, when you see some, you know, the amount of turnover and retirement in town managers these days, the complexity of the work, I think that one year guarantee is definitely uh, a, a bold statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, both, both, we will be involved probably if we do hire them. Both companies were going to most likely interview each one of us to kind of get a feel for what we're looking for, you know, learn about town, those kind of things. I'm not probably interview some departments as well and kind of just get a feel for the town, be able to put it all together. How much time do they need to get us uh, some candidates? Because we're kind of getting down to the water here. It's, we're going to have, uh, it's like a 30 day window. <coughs> so I bet they can once we them. give them the go, I'm guessing we would have candidates in like a 60 to 90 day time frame. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, motion. Any other so further discussion? Have, yeah, you'd have someone hire from July first. Anyway. Yeah, and, uh, that gives them. They said months. this is a good time right now. It's actually there aren't a lot of towns looking right this moment, so it is kind of a good time. And I asked them, is there a good time or a bad time to be putting these proposals out there because of budget cycle, these different things? They said, no. If somebody's looking, they're looking and. You know, there isn't really. They don't see any seasonal variation in anything. So, so yeah, I actually, I actually didn't buy that. You didn't buy that. I didn't buy that. Okay. Because yeah. if somebody's looking for a job change, be a line. Somebody's looking. Kind of they're looking. Look at we got our HR person. He's yeah. just looking. I mean, he didn't look tell it. anybody, but. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't tell my employer. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last person to tell. <laughs> And it's just in in the past that we, we went to the weekend and you said you got it off of Indeed. Indeed, yeah. yeah. You know, there there's so many options out there. If somebody's looking, we're gonna hear from them, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. People have their ear to the ground when they're young and looking for a job change. Jane has one question here. So comment. when we did our search committee, mm -hmm. we didn't get what I would call a reasonable candidate pool the first time. We had to go out again, and we're lucky we got a wonderful candidate, but the rest of the pool, not so much. And I think that having somebody who's in this professionally, instead of expecting people to find it in an ad somewhere one day or a month or whatever, mm -hmm. is a much, especially for a position like this, I think it's much more useful to go that route. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. Okay. <laughs> the money talks. And the money talks. talks. <laughs> so, so who <laughs> is going to spearhead this? I had offered myself when Ed was a candidate. Um, I mean, I'm here till I'm, I'm not. I'm not a candidate anymore. I'm here till July. So yeah. I'm more than happy to. I nominated. Do, do you want us to tag team? Do you? How do you want? Yeah. How do you guys? You have time. I'm happy to be involved to kind of get the get it rolling. Yeah. And then we can figure it out. So, so my only concern with putting it on you is since you're leaving, that I'm sure you have a long list of things that might be a little bit more critical as far as just from a strictly HR perspective, knocking out of the way before you head sure. out the door, and I just, you know, stuff that's been kind of on the back burner for decades. So if I uh, if I need to come up for air, you'll be the first people I tell. How's okay. that? All right. Selling a deal. All right. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good to start what's, off with. What, what sounds sure. good? You and Ed. You okay. Ted. Ted. Yeah, and then Ted. 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 Ted.
the clerk here keep in touch yeah. with them. Yeah. Sounds good. Then you'll let us know, hopefully. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Is that it on that? That's it on that. So. Yeah. Sorry about the deployment, though. <laughs> it's <laughs> not your fault. Yeah. You, know, you knew the risk, I guess, when you hired me. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were hoping you weren't, and I'm yeah, sure no. you were too. But hey, I told you in my letter I'm retired. I'm eligible, so <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, though. Yeah, it's all good. Just stay safe. That's all we yeah. want. All right. Next. Okay. Next. He wanted. To, oh, you're going to do the DBW another time. What else are you here for? Uh, refresh my memory. I had suffer from anymore? CRS slash also remember everything. Uh, uh, sewer, water, water no. <coughs> I think that's it. All right, escape right here. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Then. For supper. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, town meeting annual town meeting warrants. Uh, this is. Do we have to uh, open the warrant? No, the warrant is closed at this time. Okay. Um, the finance committee has uh, dug in and they've made uh, six recommendations so far. Seven recommendations so far. Okay. Uh, select board could do the consent agenda. It's a little okay. early yet. You want to wait, Joyce? Yeah, we're only in the end of February here. We could. Really, um, consent. Do we just want to? Well, we could go. I mean, we could do the consent agenda. There's not much there, but if we want more time to review, we can. Uh, can we put the assessor's legal fund on the consent agenda? Is that allowed? It's the same thing every year, basically. It's for their their legal fees for abatement requests, right? You, you can do that. The, the um, number, number ten. ten. First, first page. Because that's what it's for, right? For the abatement request. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, this is a lot higher than we've had before. What's what do you mean? The fifteen thousand, right? Fifteen thousand. Yeah. What's the average? Well, they originally asked for seventy-five thousand, so they knocked it down by sixty grand. Oh wow! Um, but is, is that the reason? It's not because the dollar amount fluctuates on this one yeah. pretty significantly. I yeah. think that's why it wasn't on consent. Okay. But I don't care. We can vote on the consent agenda. Yeah, let's go through the consent agenda real quick and just. Get those out of the way. I don't think okay, it's so much. Article One is uh, to allow us to accept and <coughs> expend monies from gifts and grants without calling the town meeting every time we did that. Chapter Ninety is required with the state to keep our roads and bridges of uh, money going to get three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars a year out of that. Short-term borrowing is just a management tool in case we have a cash flow problem. We never have, but it's nice to have this in the tool chest. Fund balance transfers, this is a sweep article we do every town meeting to take unproductive money and put it back into the original pot from when it came. Uh, CPA extensions, so adding two years to the athletic field projects over at the Hopkins Academy. They have a sunset provision. Uh, they were delayed in going because of a boundary issue. Um, so we're just asking that two years be ex uh, added to this. Um, article what the water treatment filtration stabilization fund we put twenty six thousand dollars away every year for a ten year cycle in order to uh, uh, develop a pool of money for the filtration membranes and talk, takes about twenty six two hundred sixty thousand to uh, replace those in a ten year cycle. Motion to approve. Second. Just what, would, what about the rest of them here? And then the CPA administrative, <laughs> this is this is required by law. <laughs> nice stuff. <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, do you mind if we just pull out the 
the fund balance transfers for this go round, just to look at that a little bit closer and make sure that all looks good. So pull it off the consent. Just pull it off. Just pull off this vote particular action. vote right okay. now. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And just we'll pen that one. But you have, uh, let's see, you got more to go on this consent agenda. That was it, I think, right? What happened to I'm just saying pull Article 5 off to the side, or 4, four. four right now. Well, assessor's legal fee is on there. You That's got, not on we, consent. It's not consent. Well, how come it continues on? Seven. Look at There's 10. 10, 11, 12. Oh, but it doesn't say consent no, agenda. Oh, it has so. to say consent yeah. there. Oh. What is this then? <clears throat> what is this going to be? Oh, that will be later. Later. Yeah. We're not going to talk about those. We don't need to talk about that okay. right now. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so, any further discussion on the consent agenda? So we're going one to seven, with the exception of four. Correct. One to seven. Okay. I thought we'd take that. When I raised the thing, I thought it was all of them we were going to discuss oh, tonight. Oh, everything. Oh no. Yeah. 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 So this early. Turn my hair yeah. gray. <laughs> You'd be done the I'm, right too, time. I'm too young to turn gray, right? <laughs> all right. Okay. All, all those in favor of the consent agenda minus article number four. Aye. 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 Gotcha. And then, uh, well, we can have to talk about that. Okay. Anything else here we should address right now? Not really. David, anything in particular? Uh, Get that off our list. No, I think I think. Uh, Six articles, yeah. five articles down at the first night. That's good. That's a good night. Okay. So let's just do these uh, three sewer, or well, one sewer and two water abatement items real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, select board will review the sewer connection at 14 Breckenridge Road. I don't know if everybody's gotten a chance to read that, mm -hmm. but Chris Okafor is recommending that we grant this abatement, that we do not charge the fees to this address. And we reimburse Proof. them for the sewer fees they did pay from and last year. Yes. And they're asking for a waiver of the connection fees. No, that's, I, I actually spoke with Chris today. <coughs> he said uh, not to reimburse them, I had thought, for what they paid, but to waive the permits and fees for the tie-in fees, to tie that house, that property into the sewer system. But that's the way I. That's, that's the way I understand. It. Everybody's paid for sewer throughout the whole project since 1988, when they put the sewer down those streets. It was an incentive to have the people that were tied to the uh, septic systems to tie in to the sewer system. They were all charged fees from day one. Even though they weren't actually connected. Even though they weren't actually connected. <coughs> yeah, certainly is uh, taking baby steps on this. The sewer impact fees yeah. wasn't in effect when this originally was built, so yeah. there would have been none at that day. Mm -hmm. They did pay connection fees that were applicable at the day. They just didn't connect for whatever reason. We don't know. Um, so the fee, waiving the fees just seems appropriate. Yeah. Uh, certainly granting the abatement for the most recent sewer bill is appropriate. Oh, okay, for just the recent one, not mm -hmm. yeah. the past. So but is that, this, this is reimbursement of, it looks like the homeowners requesting that we reimburse sewer fees paid 818 to 1119, so that is that the most recent bill? That seems like over a year. year. The most recent one was the one that went out. Quarter, right? Yeah, quarter it just quarter? went out on February 3rd. So I, so it sounds like Chris is recommending that we waive the connecting fees. Um, and the homeowner is also, in addition to that, asking for a reimbursement of sewer fees. 
So I guess our question is, do we make a motion to just reimburse the fees or to, or I'm sorry, to waive the fees or do we waive the fees and reimburse the sewer payment? I'll make a motion that we accept the recommendation of the DPW director. Um, I'll second. That's not satisfactory. Come back to us. Second. So just yeah. to be clear, wait, we're going to waive the fees, the connect the connecting fees, fees, but not the back pay, the previously paid sewer bills. Right. Okay. Except for the most recent quarter. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so we are going to put the most recent quarter. Reimburse that. Yeah. 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 Right yeah, we do right now. Okay. Yeah, we we knew of this issue, but that uh, the collector's office yeah. sent out the bill without yeah. knowing that we knew that the issue was yeah. happening. So that just that just seems. So fair. we're not reimbursing, really. We're just telling them they don't telling them they don't have to pay it. it. We're not reimbursing. Right. Yeah. It's pretty good though to have a septic system that hasn't been pumped in over 20 years and is still operating fine. <laughs> there's there's been minimal people living in that house no, and it's okay. changed hands a couple times already I guess and someone one of the realtors called and it was given the wrong information and nobody knows who made that that critical decision and said it was on sewer when it wasn't and there's still a couple other properties that we're not sure of that we're going to be in the process of die testing to make sure they are on sewer so okay. all right okay. Any further discussion on this? No, so seconded. I think Joyce did. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Okay, then we have um, the water abatement at Six Hillside and the amount of thirty-two dollars and fifty cents. Motion to approve. Second. All those or any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Then we have a water and sewer abatement, 68 Russell Street, in the amount of $28.43. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll abstain. Okay. All right, we got those. <laughs> get the next page. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the next page here. <laughs> abstain on the other one, too. Don't. Yeah. I got you all there. <laughs> all right, Senior Center Library and Fire Substation updates. Uh, Jane, you want to go first, Senior Center, or? Yeah. Good, Molly. You Molly. always get to go first. I'm okay. going to go first, Molly. <laughs> We're going to open um, first, so you yeah, guys yeah, should go yeah. first. Yeah. 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 Go so just checking, um, everybody on the board should have received the uh, monthly update from DA Sullivan, who's dated February 7th. Mm -hmm. um, basically, from a financial standpoint, you can see that there are any uh, change orders at this point. And uh, you know, Mark did a good job just kind of outlining the retainage, giving everybody an update on where we're at. Um, you know, I, I mean, I think if you, all you have to do is drive by, it is pretty obvious we have ourselves a library. Uh, yeah. A pretty impressive building. I'm looking forward to, you know, the finishing work on the exterior. But, uh, Certainly, right we now, don't want it to on. stay purple, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put a big <laughs> sign on it that says library? Because more people say to me, how can you possibly open in May? You're not even closed. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it, that the um, the next meeting is the whole conversation about uh, the design too. Yeah. 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 So, is it on schedule still as far as opening? Yeah. I mean, there there was a little bit of concern that it might start to go a little bit off schedule, but again, you know, weather's been cooperating. They've got it wrapped. Um, I thought they said August twenty. <coughs> no, twenty twenty. August twenty twenty. And that email I we got from uh, not from Mark, but from uh, right. Allison. I mean, I think we've been looking at late summer all along. Yeah. You know. August. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. whether it was August first, but it's not. Um, what we're really keeping an eye on is the construction cost mm -hmm. itself in mm -hmm. terms of any impact there. Mm -hmm. so. Great. Okay. Um, go ahead. Choice. Um. We just had um, a couple of change orders, but we talked about it at our last meeting. Uh, nothing official, but we knew we had to do some uh, additional electric outlets in the dispatcher area. Um, so that was going to cost like uh, $629. And then there was additional 
electrical work to get done in that area also, which comes to $2,000, 2342 um, We have not voted on this. We did discuss it at the last meeting, so it'll be brought up at our, our next uh, First meeting of the month. Um, you know, March. Right now. Yeah. If you would like to, that would be fine. I mean, if you want don't. to, just get please it don't. Off. Please okay, don't. No. we'll do it through the finance that? committee yeah. first of the okay. of the building the committee, and then we'll bring it. Okay, you don't have the actual. Okay, that's. Yeah. I have the actual. They're just CO2 a little uh, rough electrical right now. You don't. Okay, so we'll do. Pardon? They're just into the rough electrical right now. Yes. Okay. Yes, and we or just had picked out the council type of things that need to go there, which is going to be the same thing as what we have at the main dispatch yeah. area. So, so you can just take everything out of there and put it up there if you ever needed to? Well, we're going to build in a council yeah. and everything up there. So yes, that everything would just fit up there. And are you on time? We are on time. What, July? Looking good? July, yeah. We are so good. on time. We are <laughs> on time, you betcha. <laughs> and with a little cushion. Yeah, that's good. All right, Jane. So the senior center is moving yeah. along. The sheetrocking finishes this week and painting starts. The bathrooms are tiled. Unfortunately, they, at their dollar, have to pull out a set of the tiles because it was supposed to be an accent wall of dark blue and the other's white, and they made them all dark blue. Not good for seniors' visibility. Yeah. So they're, that's their thing. They're doing it. Um, the fireplace is so is in and the stonework on the front of that starting. HVAC is finishing this week. Did I say that? They're putting it, they're starting kitchen equipment in a couple of weeks. Things are moving right along. And they're painting walls and they're painting all walls. Kinds of stuff. No flooring yet, right? Flooring but will be after everything yeah, else after is done so they don't drop on it. But there's actually paint on the walls now. Drywall is done. Well, yeah. not quite yet, but there's not quite. getting there. Getting there. Oh, and they're putting up all the um, wood trim on windows and door frames. Okay. In May for an uh, opening date still? Uh, yeah, we're counting on it. Okay. And a big party on the 14th. 14, 15, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. We'll be sending out schedules. Did, did we get any uh, word back for the opening on anything? No. Okay. It, take, it takes a little while. Okay. But um, I would say that's to the positive that they have not said no okay. yet. Yeah, that's good. So, but yeah. as soon as I hear, I'll let people know. Um, do they have a idea of when they're going to put the final pavement on the outside, on the exterior? Well, they obviously need to wait till the asphalt company's open. Well, yeah. But they're talking mid-April if they okay. don't need to rush because they got today they got a... Um, the surround for the dumpster area. Mm -hmm. The plywood that you see that you haven't seen before is because a neighbor complained about the noise of a blower. Um, they got the fence at the top of the retaining walls on the south side of the property. It looks really nice. It actually makes that property look a lot better than it used to look. Um, that heater that they got sounds like a jet going over your house all the time. So, Well, that was what he was saying. Well, part of construction. The you said it's going to be completed this week, so maybe yeah, but we can start they're not, the they're not going to tie into it. Oh, they right. don't want to start any equipment until we take occupancy, so the warranties start at oh, that okay. point, yeah. Yeah. not under their nickel. Plus, you contaminate it all with drywall dust and everything else. And yeah. Yeah. Well, there is a noise level from 7 a.m. until 11 p.m. at yeah. night. All right, great. Thank you. And we could do the town administrator report. Sure. We, anything we did not discuss there? <laughs> uh, I'll make it very <coughs> brief. Uh, so we've submitted two applications to CPA in order to uh, restore Goodwin Memorial Library electrical systems, ceiling, and other improvements in order to begin to move some of the department town departments out of town hall over there. So hopefully that. Uh, the CPA will see their way towards throwing some money the, towards those projects. Um, just charging through that we haven't already talked to death about. We got a grant for DLTA for $12,000 for continuing the work on a municipal guide for large-scale solar developments. Um, the widening of Route 9 
uh, and Bay Road Bridge. We received uh, the information from Senator Comerford's office and Mass Department of Transportation has agreed to postpone the Bay Road Bridge replacement to 2024 or 2025, and that will help enormously with the east-west traffic during the Route 9 widening project. Department of Revenues uh, for the current fiscal year are meeting the expectations, as are departmental expenses. Uh, in good shape in terms of money coming in and money going out. Uh, financial management team will meet next Thursday at noontime to um, explore better models for the administrative charges for the enterprise funds. And they'll make a recommendation and bring we'll bring that recommendation back to the board. And that'll have maybe an impact upon the budget, 35000 um, Budget update. We just went through that. Uh, free cash certification, that's all done. Uh, the audit is in process, and I had the management meeting with the auditors this afternoon. Things seem to be good. Um, and then the townspeople have three opportunities to um, cast votes. One is March 3rd, presidential primary, Super Tuesday. April 14th, annual town elections. There's a race for the select board. Uh, and then May 7th is the annual town meeting. Everybody who's a registered voter is encouraged to participate in our democracy. Have we gone over um, dates for future meetings? We were going to put that on the agenda for next time. What is next time? Sorry? When March is our next meeting? March 4th. Uh, the March 4th. Okay. All right. We can Picking, well, yeah, we can do it next. Next, month. I can tell you. I can tell you right now if you wish. I, ha I have them up till you know eight, mid April, basically. Mm -hmm. So then we can talk about what we want to do after that. March fourth, March eighteenth, April first, April fourteenth. What what is happening in April four in April? April first and April fourteenth. You're having it on a Tuesday. Fourteenth is your two weeks from the first. Mm -hmm. The 15th, I think. Yeah, so the 1st and the 15th. I've got the 11th as well. 11th is on Saturday, dear. Oh, of March. Of March. But maybe, maybe I have it incorrectly. Because I have the 11th and the 18th of March. What, you got three? You got three in March? That's what is on my calendar, but that doesn't necessarily mean that. If you do have a meeting, just know that that week I'm actually out of town at the conference. Okay. Which one? The 11th. The 11th. Of March. <laughs> March. Hold on. Let's what do you have March. on your calendar? Let's start with March again. Where March is March? the 4th right. and the 18th, right. for sure. All right. The 11th is questionable, okay. but we can uh, verify that. All right. And then we have April 1st, April 15th, and then I have April 22nd, but April 22nd. That's a backup. Is a backup. Okay. Yeah. And then I have the 29th is the town meeting public forum. Right now. You're going to do that on Wednesday night? That's what I have right now. Okay. What was it? Was it on your calendar on March 11th or no? Uh, March 11th, uh, no. No, okay. So. Well, I'll have to decide whether I'm going to go to the corned beef dinner on in March or something else in April, so we'll see. Yeah. We just have to do one more before May, before the summer. That's the way it is, folks. What okay. was the Polish for dinner tonight? <coughs> I don't know. Do you know what it was? Polish dinner tonight? No, I don't know. I don't know. I know the fire department was cooking something. There's a good crowd there tonight. Well, yeah. in April 14th, too, as a note, that might be the last election we have at the high school. We might have them at the uh, oh, yeah, yeah. the uh, senior center after mm -hmm. after that after it opens in May. Do you have That's a so CPA exciting. thing from Mary Thayer? Yes. Fourteenth, it's town. Yes. That's what I was going to get into. Is CPA? We um, have uh, someone we need to appoint for the position. 
I, I, I had not put it on the agenda because I had asked someone for uh, a letter. They did not submit, but you do have a letter of interest from Mary Thayer. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. She has experience working with the CPA. I don't believe she was on the CPA. I believe she applied for CPA. Yeah. And I believe she has other sort of beneficial um, interests that would help the town with their mm -hmm. CPA. Great. So she has expressed interest in serving on it. So if y'all would like to. Make a motion to appoint Mary Thayer to the... CPA? For the unexpired term. For the unexpired term. Second. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Any further discussion? No, I'll just say thanks for volunteering. Um, yeah. She helped with the uh, Hadley Reservoir Conservation Land and that committee, mm -hmm. and she's been involved in a lot of things, so it's great to have her involved in it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For sure. That's good. All right, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll email her tomorrow morning and let her know because she's going to jump right on. Yeah. Any other unforeseen items right now before we go to announcements? Yeah, I just had a quick update. Um, I attended the Campus Community Coalition, the CCC meeting, okay. over at the university today, right. along with um, uh, Joel was there representing the Hadley Police Department. And so this was a meeting, uh, it's an ongoing meeting. They have X number of meetings a year. And just a reminder, this is the group that um, Sally Lenowski uh, works with and uh, Tony Morales heads up along with, I think, uh, Lindsey Stromberg is uh, maybe co-chair. He's retired, person. Yeah, and it's the, um, it's the Campus Coalition to Reduce High-Risk Drinking. You know, so this was developed several years ago um, in response to a lot of the issues that we were obviously having at our flagship campus, along as many other places. So. Uh, Part of the agenda was a presentation um, by the Executive Director of Wellness Access and Prevention, and the initiative right now is they're very much focused on um, mental health issues. You know, I think they kind of started with the education around substance abuse in general, and now they're backing it up, uh, looking at, so it's all good information, but the um, pertinent part for us is they're planning for the possibility of March 7th, uh, being the weekend prior to the kids leaving for break. So, uh, Polarney weekend, are we? They, they, they are requesting that certain words not pass our lips, so I will not mention the BB. Uh, but basically, what we should know is that there's really no noticeable change in the approach they've taken. Last year went really, really well. Uh, the weather certainly cooperated as well because it was pretty cold and lousy out. But um, they're actually reducing the number of, of officers and state police that they're bringing in. A couple, few years back, things were bad enough. They had like a couple of hundred. They're, they're down to 100, which is great. Um, Hadley's actively engaged. Joel's going to be going, knocking door to door. Some of the party houses just saying, hey, guys, you know, heads up. Just want to make sure you know what the rules are. Um, so uh, they're not really anticipating a, a huge issue. Uh, but. Just you know, know that we're. You we're never know. With it. Yeah. yeah. It's a crap shoot. Mm -hmm. if it's warm. They're if out. It's warm. It could be off. If you get a blizzard, it'll be quiet weekend. <laughs> Can you call in any clouds? Yeah. <laughs> we always put the ED on a word also. Yeah. <laughs> Those we'll, weekends. We'll on the list to call. Okay. Yes. All right. Any other announcements? Could you? Can we do one more request for dedications for the annual report and the oh, Fred yeah. Oakley Award? Yes. As soon as possible, they could email info at hadleyma.org. Okay. And do you have all the annual report items that you need, or are you still waiting on some folks? Perhaps some departments forgot to get theirs to me, but I'm sure that they're in my mailbox <laughs> by now. Okay. <laughs> but also a reminder that boards and committees also need to submit theirs. There's, there's still quite a few outstanding. Okay. Do we have any nominations yet for any of those? Or? I have one for Fred uh, Oakley, yeah. um, and I've had one <coughs> for uh, the annual report. I don't know if you want me to say them or yeah, just hold it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just curious if we got any. So. Yeah. They were both good. Okay. okay. And we can make a motion to adjourn. I That's just, everything. Have, I just oh, have one. I have one thing. I'm sorry. It, 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 not a Hadley resident, but John Swislowski uh, passed Fine. away. Um, the family owns a lot of property in town. But anyway, his brother does live in town, Carl. 
uh, so to Carl uh, for the loss of his brother and to their family also and many farming friends here in Hadley too. Um, John was a quiet guy but a good guy so very nice. So condolences to them. Great. Now uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have a great night. <laughs> Thank you.